Welcome back to another, another broadcast here on ECTV. I'm Kareem Burnett with my broadcast partner, Levi Taylor. Levi, the Red Devils come into this game seventh in the Sly Act, two games behind Blackburn for playoff contention. What are some things the Red Devils will have to do here tonight to keep their playoff hopes alive? Well, this is a very, very big game, and the obvious answer is win. But I think for the Red Devils tonight, we've seen all season Cody Bear, Pee Wee Brown be the leading scorers on the team. We've seen Ben Carter step up in the last few games, putting up some big numbers. I think tonight, in order for them to win, they're going to need that third or fourth score that's putting up good numbers as opposed to just having the two that are putting up all the points. To give some evidence to what you're saying, the last time these two teams match up, matched up, it was a 12-point loss for the Red Devils despite a 30-point outburst for Pee Wee Brown and 12 made team threes as a whole. And we've kind of seen that a lot from the Red Devils, especially in these last few games. Will start games hot or be hot from deep as gen in general, but still not able to close out these games. Levi, what are some things our team will need to do to kind of pick up our second half play and close out these basketball games? Well, I think it starts on the defensive end. Keep up the intensity on the defensive end. Create offense with your defense. Keep up the intensity. Don't allow second chance opportunities. Don't turn the ball over. This this uh, MUW team turns the ball over a lot. So if you can force them to make mistakes and get out in transition and get points, you're going to put yourself in a good position to win this ballgame. Yeah, like you said, Levi, we'll definitely need to pick up our defensive intensity, and I believe we have a lot of defensive potential. We rank slick, six in the Sly Act in terms of total defense. But that's all we have here for you in the pregame. We'll be right back at you with the tip-off. Again, I'm Kareem Burnett. This is Levi Taylor right here on ECTV. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Got a new house. It's looking pretty cool so far. A place that I call home. I'm teaching Louise how to cook some lasagna. You don't need to Thank you. Let's study, please. I think I finally found a place to make my own. A place that I call home. This place that I call home. And now we'll throw it down to Ethan Hedge for our starting lineups. My pockets in shape. Uh, got my side to side the same. If I run out of space, they booked out of state. Top out of beans, a woman on space was driving this silly to get to the brakes. I had a bean inside of the race besides the team that curtain in the way. I had to sprint, I went to the end, unless some old friends can keep up. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Christine Bonatti Bullwinkle Arena and Convocation Center for today's St. Louis Intercollegiate Athletic Conference matchup between the Mississippi University for Women and your Eureka Red Devils. Both Eureka College and the NCAA promote good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated in our grounds for removal from the facility. We thank you for your cooperation. We would like to welcome a special guest that will be announcing today's starting lineups. Dawson Pettit, a first grader at John L. Henzey, will be here to announce today's starting lineups. Now let's meet today's starting lineups. First, for the visiting Mississippi for University of Women's Owls. Six foot five, senior from Valencia, Spain, number zero, Bry Hopkins. New 
jersey number five, Chris Evans. Six six, junior out of Faulkner, Mississippi, number twelve, Cam Smith. Six foot three, sophomore from Boonville, Mississippi, number twenty, Josh Dukes. And a senior from Reform, Alabama, number four, Darian Doss. And now, let's meet today's starting lineups for your Eureka Red Devils. Six four, sophomore out of Morton, Illinois. Number four, Bing Carter. Six foot, senior from Peoria, Illinois. Number five, Noah. Peoria, Illinois, number 10, Kiwi Brown. Six foot, junior from Rock Falls, Illinois, number 11, Jalen Johnson. Six foot, 10 inch, senior out of Peoria, Illinois, number 24, Cody There you have it for our starting lineups. Red Devils running that traditional starting lineup. Jalen Johnson, Noah Persis, Cody Bear, Pee Wee Brown, and Ben Carter. It'll be Smith and Bear for the tip off here. I'm very excited about this game, Levi. I'm, uh, almost a guarantee, a needed win for the Red Devils here after they close out a very close game, last game out versus Lion. It'll be Smith with the tip off. Yeah, with a few games remaining, every game is pretty much a must win for the Red Devils to keep their playoff hopes alive. It'll be Dukes with it. Over to Shepard. To Doss. In down Lola Smith. He's working Cody Bear. He's going to go up for his first attempt of the night, and it's no good from Dukes. It's going to be a very interesting matchup with Dukes and Bear down low. Two big bodies going at it. It's going to be an interesting to see them go at it all night. Always interesting to see a marquee big man matchup. I think we'll be brought one here tonight. It's Carter over to Persich. Head fake. Back out to Carter. To Johnson. And the Brown. Brown's going to turn it over. It's going to be Doss with it. Over to Evans. Evans, he, he has Persich on him. Dukes in the Smith. Smith working that middle. He's going to work on Cody Bear. Not able to find nothing. Evans a little pull up mid range. And Evans on the board. I'm excuse me, Doss on the board for his first two of the night. To give MUW a two point lead. Red Devils need to settle in right here on offense. Move the ball around, get an open shot, and knock it down. And there's Ben Carter doing exactly that as he's on the board for his th first three points of the night. And ben Carter, what an amazing. Sophomore season it's been from him. Much improved from his first freshman year. Very high potential player. Smith jabs up. He's working Bear. He's going to go up under. He's going to force it in. And it's going to be a miss there from Bear. Smith, he's going right at Bear from the jump. Being very, very aggressive. Ben Carter out for three. He's going to try his luck again. And Ben Carter reigns in his second triple of the night. And the Red Devils on the board, 6-2. to two. And, I mean, he has really stepped up here in these last couple of games and added an extra element to this offense, and that's what we were talking about, needing that third or fourth score score, because you know Pee Wee Brown and Cody Bear are going to get theirs. Yes, and Ming Carter has been exactly that to start this game with uh, only six points of the Red Devils. 
And it's Noah Persons applying the defensive pressure. And Doss going to turn it over. A lot of energy in this building to start off early on. Red Devils playing good defense coming out. And the students bringing a lot of energy in this building, making it a very lively atmosphere. This is something we've seen a lot from the Red Devils in these last three or four games. Starting these games very good with high energy, but you knowing that second half kind of energy kind of withers some. Going to have to play a full two halves. Jalen Johnson, he's going to pull up for a mid range. No good from Johnson. Evans going to come down with the rebound. He's going to push it up sideline. Evan, John, Evan on, the, on the drive. He's working Noah Persis, using that body, that size. Not able to give it up. Cody Bear with the rebound. Taylor Johnson in the Ben Carter. Noah Persis corner three. He's going to fire it up. And Noah Persis going to rein it in from three. MUW going to take a timeout here. Nine to two point lead. Nine to two. Seven point lead for the Red Devils. Right here on ECTV. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. All right, pal. Burnett, Levi Taylor right back at here on ECTV. The Reagan Center, the Red Devils off to a seven-point lead. Nine to two. It's MUW avoiding the turnover on that play. Isaiah Ball is checked into this basketball game for the first time. The senior guard from Wesley College, formerly Wesley College. Go over to Shepard. Shepard going to line up a triple, and he's going to make a triple to cut the lead down to four. Johnson pushing the pace over to Persich. Johnson looking for Carter. He's going to find Carter. Carter testing his luck from deep. Not able to get that one to fall. Going to be ball, bringing it up. He's going to use that little Shepard mini screen. He's going to find Shepard. Shepard over to Dukes. And denying Smith the inside look. And Ball, his first attempt is a mate. A really good pull-up jumper. I mean, he was kind of playing off him a little bit, anticipating the driver, and he noticed that and was able to pull up and hit up hit the shot. Yeah, that was a very high release. He got a lot of lift on that jumper. Johnson over to Carter. Carter looking in to Brown. They're gonna send a triple team. Still not gonna be enough. For as Brown finishes over three defenders. It's Paul going to bring it up. Work the offense. Over to Shepard. Back to Ball. He's looking for Smith. He's going to find him. Smith goes to that spin move. He's denied. And they're scrambling for it. And we're going to get a jump ball here. Red Devils being very aggressive on the defensive end. Something you talked about in the pregame, Levi. And they've come out and done exactly that. Yeah, I need to keep this defensive effort up because you're going to turn defense into offense. You can turn, turn it into points. You need to keep this defensive pressure up. Don't relax. Don't back down. Don't get comfortable. Keep them on their toes. Don't let them rest on offense. Keep up the intensity. Defense is always the easiest way to get instant offense. Brown with the ball on the wing. Johnson, top of the key, over to Persich. Persich working his defender. Back out to Brown. Brown, pump fake corner three. He's going to drive, almost lost it. Able to find Ben Carter. And Ben Carter going to slam it home for the end. One, two. Ben Carter with an aggressive backdoor cut to give the Red Devils a six-point lead. Really, really good pass to find the breaking Carter on the baseline. And good job from Ben Carter fighting through the contact and still able to convert the basket to get the M1. Ben Carter, athleticism is just seamless. He got up so quick and easy on that backdoor cut. I thought it was going to be a layup at first, but he slammed it home. Chance here to convert that. And one. 
He does. He does just that. Seven point lead for the Red Devils. You know, MUW looked like they were cutting it down. Were able to cut it down to a two point lead, and Red Devils pushed it right back up to seven. Islamovic checked into this game for his first minute. Ball on the drive. He's working Brown. Dukes. He's working inside. Not able to get it. Great defense there by Carter. Person's going to run the break. Going to find Cody Bear. He's going to go up. And he's blocked by Smith. A great rejection there by Smith. It's Mink Carter almost coming up with the steal. I think we're going to get a warning here. I'm gonna get a foul call. Not really sure what the rest were motioning on that play. Uh, I'm not not sure. Oh, it's a shot clock problem. That's uh, what it was. You've seen a lot of those this season. I say a ball with the ball at the top of the key. If your last name ball nine times out of ten, you're probably good at basketball. Dukes with the drive on Ben Carter. He's gonna go up. Not able to get that glass. Cody Bear going to end up with the defensive rebound. On a finest point guard, Johnson. Johnson, Islamovic on him. Brown, wide open corner three. Not able to get that one. Smith going to come down with the rebound. Paul going to walk it up the court. Islamovic. He has Johnson on him. Over to Doss. Doss. He's working first. He's going to go into that post. Brown going to help off. Ball with that high arcing jumper. And it's blocked by Cody Bear on the jump shot attempt. Carter to one. The rebound. Very impressive block from Pee Wee Brown. Just an incredible defensive play. Very athletic move. Cody Bear on a spin move. A fading away jump hook. He's going to find nothing but nylon. We see him go to that move quite often. And he's very good when he's able to get into that post and, and get to work. Cody Bear more of a finesse big than pure strength. Able to use his size and agility to finish over the defender most times. It's Dukes. He's on the island. Cody Bear going to tip it out of bounds. Going to stay here in UW's ball. Red Devils, I like the energy they've come out with on both sides of the court. Being aggressive defensively and offensively. Smith top of the key over to Evans Evans over to Islamovic Duke's gonna drive baseline he has Carter gonna end up in the hand of Dawson he's gonna get a floater to go in really good baseline pass to find the open man in the paint a lot of times oftentimes if you're driving baseline there is gonna be somebody open in the paint as <laughs> Ben Carter knocks down another three he's on fire for his second three-pointer of the night to go along with a Monster baseline jam. Like you said, Levi, a lot of times when you do break down baseline, someone is going to be open for that middle for a jump shot or a floater or something. Evans, he's going to test his luck from deep. He's going to get no good there. It's tipped out of bounds by Islamovic. Not noted, but I'm going to note now. Blake Logsdon checked into this game for the first time. Now the freshman, Micah Brewer, also checking into this game for Ben Carter. You know, we switched our rotations a little bit from earlier on in the season. Blake Logsdon's twin brother, Dylan Logsdon, was the sixth man. Now Blake Logsdon being the first one to come off that bench. Cody Bear is fouled there by Reed. Oh, no foul. I think they're going to get an out-of-bounds call on, Brown, or on Bear. Evans over to Doss. Doss. Motioning Dukes. Gonna end up back in the hand of Evans. He's gonna use the Islamovic screen. Dukes gonna try to work Carter. He's gonna finally get one to go. Cut it down to an eight-point lead. Very physical take. Kind of lowered the shoulder there and, and got Carter out of his way. And was still got some contact going up and was able to fight through it and finish the bucket. Freshman Micah Brewer. His first look of the night. No good. Islamovic, he's going to step out of bounds and he's going to stay here for the Red Devils. Red Devils are 
Gonna get a replay here. Look at that Ben Carter slam. Such an athletic move. He gonna flex on him, let him feel his energy. Cody and Pee Wee Brown able to draw the foul on that play. The last time these two teams faced, Pee Wee Brown went to the free throw line 12 times. So maybe looking to duplicate that performance in this matchup. His first trip at the line. Brown is on the board. His first look at the line tonight. Red Devils lead this game 20 to 11. 11 minutes remaining in this first half. Pee Wee Brown two for two from the line. You know, me and Spencer kind of talk about it all the time. Pee Wee Brown improvement from his freshman year at Lincoln to now, especially at the free throw line, has been tremendous. Carter almost comes up with that steal. And Doss gonna rise up for a uh, long two. Ben Carter gonna test his luck from deep again. And Ben Carter, he's on fire from deep. His third triple of the night. I think he's got that limitless range badge, Kareem. Hall of Fame, if you ask me. And Pee Wee Brown getting into the defense here. And we're gonna get a jump ball. It's gonna stay here. The Red Devils have come out hot from deep. Ben Carter. Doing his best Steph Curry impersonation. Letting it rain. Cross going to end up with it. Evans, another long two. Not able to find that one. Carter comes down with that rebound. Excuse me, Bear. Carter going to walk it up. Going to go in to Bear. He has Smith Jr. on him. He's going to rise up and take the floater. Red Devils lead this game 26 to 13. And as you mentioned, Cody Bear, a fin more of a finesse big, using his size advantage there to just go over top of the defender and score. Toss able to come up with two offensive rebounds and get himself a trip to the line. You know, one offensive rebound is a detriment, but you never want to allow two offensive rebounds in one possession. That's just a confidence killer. Yeah, that's one thing that the Red Devils need to clean up clean up on. They've allowed a few, a few um, offensive rebounds here in this first half. Really need to clean up on that. Don't allow them to have second chance opportunities. You never want to give a team multiple, multiple looks at the line. Percentage-wise, they're more and more likely to get one. But Doss not able to, I mean, excuse me, Dukes not able to convert on that one. Smith going to check into this game for Smith Jr., Pond's going to try to make up his first attempt. Make the second one on this one. The Red Devils, you know, we've seen this in the last game out versus Lion. They were on fire from deep in that game, making 11 threes. They come out just as hot in this game. Yeah, and they're being led by, by Ben Carter, who's just been absolutely on fire to start this game. Dylan Logsdon, he's going to fire up his first three. Carter going to come up with the offensive rebound. He's going to draw the foul. And, and one by Ben Carter. And he is completely cooking in this first half. He's up to double digits already. Three. Just a, a physical play from Ben Carter to fight for the offensive rebound and then fight for the contact and still somehow managed to make that basket. Ben Carter up to 17 points in this first half already. You've seen an athletic dunk, some threes, some and ones. He's come out and completely owned this basketball game. He's able to convert the and one right there. Now he's up to 18 points on the night. Smithy seeing his first minutes tonight. Doss trying to work logs in. Smithy over to Smith. Ben Carter coming out of nowhere with the defensive help. Evans. He's going to work Brewer. He's going to get in, use that slide size get up to the floater no good Cody Bear coming down with the rebound well there was a little bit of a scramble there and the Red Devils did a good job of recovering after the scramble and still playing good defense Smith gonna test his luck from the mid-range we're gonna get a push in the back I believe
thing I'm just now noticing, Levi Evans, his first name is Chris. Chris Evans, Captain America, so <laughs> that's interesting. It's a little unfair if they got Captain America on their team. Hopefully we don't get a Steve Rogers type performance. Jonah Brewer, I mean Jonah Loft, he's seeing his first minutes. He was very successful in their last game out for 12 points, 4 for 6 from 3. Ben Carter going to test his love from deep again. And he's completely blown the roof off of this building. His fourth three-pointer tonight. He's just completely on fire. 21 quick first half points. I mean, he he shot that shot over, over the big. I mean, had a hand in his face, was still able to convert. Evans going to knock down a three of his own to kind of put that fire out. And the Red Devils up to a 16-point lead early in this half. I should say late in this half. Evans Doss able to come up with the steal there. Evans. Gonna kick it out. Find Smith in that corner. Shepard back to Evans. He's gonna test his luck. No good from three. Smithy with the rebound. Doss with another pull up mid-range. Not able to find that one. Bank Carter with the defensive rebound. Blake Logs are gonna slow it down here. Loft in that corner. Logs in the Carter. And get it back to Logs. We're going to get a timeout here by the Red Devils. Coach Wildy want to talk it over with his team. Green Burnett, Levi Taylor right here on ECTV. When people ask us who we are, we tell them we're problem solvers, opportunity creators community builders, and change makers. We are Rotary. Around the world, our network of 1.4 million neighbors, friends, and leaders volunteer their skills, expertise, and resources to solve issues and address community needs. We are people of action. Join us, and together, we can make an even greater impact. Find out how you can get involved at rotary.org slash action. And welcome back to ECTV here at the Reagan Center. The Red Devils lead 32 to 16. Jonah Loft attempts a two-pointer with the shot clock fading out and Ben Carter has been the talk of the half he's up to 21 points with four made threes from behind the arc Andrew Shepard doing his best Ben Carter impersonation and he as he reigns one in from deep gonna go loft the Brewer who are gonna find the Jesus his first minutes of the night loft working that baseline back out the Jesus logs then to Brewer, he's gonna drive, he's gonna stop, pop, pull up, mid-range, no good. Evans gonna come down with the rebound. Well, Eureka going with a smaller lineup now, not as much size with Bear on the bench. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they match up defensively. Gonna have to play tough and physical. Yeah, we seen this lineup last game out against Lioness. Shepard is fouled on his three-point attempt. You know, this lineup has some a lot of success against Lioness. He made four threes in their minutes they played together and was able to keep the Red Devils afloat in those starterless minutes. Yeah, th this is the lineup where you really need these guys. You don't need them to have a ton of production. This is not your main lineup, but you need, to, uh, need them to at least not hurt you, not commit a bunch of turnovers and still put points up. And this lineup is, is good at doing that. This is a very good lineup to have to give your starters a rest. And the main thing you really want from your bench is to come out and play with energy and Maintain the lead as Shepard going 0 for 2 in his first attempt from the line. The crowd not shy to let him hear it. Shepard going 1 for 3 in that trip. Cutting the lead down to 12. 32 to 20 here at the Reagan Center. Logsdon over to Loft. Loft going to find Blake Logsdon. He's going to try a 3. Not able to get that one. Duke's going to come down with the rebound. 
Evans coming up baseline. Over to Shepard, long court pass. Shepard, another long court pass to Dukes. Dukes working Logsdon on that baseline. And Logsdon going to draw it. Oh, it's going to be a blocking call. That's one of those where you can really go either way on it. I've really, really thought Dylan Logsdon had a uh, defensive position and the ball handler lowered his shoulder, but the refs call it the other way. Thought we were getting one of those patented logs and charges. I'm so used to seeing them every game out. Evans. Smithy with it. Back to Evans in that corner. Evans letting it ride from deep. And Evans, he's caught fire a bit himself. His second triple, I mean his third triple of the night as he cuts the lead down to nine. Noah Percy is getting ready to check back into this game. It's going to be the freshman, Micah Brewer. He has Shepard on him. Looking for Loft. He's able to find Loft. Over to Logsdon. Logsdon thought about it. Going to drive. Going to see two defenders fading away off one leg. And Dylan Logsdon. What a nice fadeaway move on that attempt. Yeah, man. What a pretty fadeaway jumper. I mean, just a beautiful move. Really athletic move from Dylan Logsdon. Chris Evans testing his luck from deep. He's knocked down three of his own. It's going to be Smithy on the drive. Out to Smith. He has Loner lost the beat. Use the contact. In the Dukes. Dukes going to go up. No good. Loft going to come down with the rebound. Really good defensive stop from the Red Devils. Staying in front of the ball handler. Doing a good job communicating and moving around. Great stop. Great way to kind of slow MUW's momentum down is they will kind of come back into this game. And Blake Logsdon, a very late call, but I definitely seen a foul on that play, and I was waiting for it. I know. I thought they were going to get away with it for a second there, but they got it right. Now that was obvious. Blake Logsdon going to get his first look at the line. Blake Logsdon, his first trip at the line today. He's able to knock it down to extend the Red Devils' lead to 12. Well, Purse is checking into this game for Micah Brewer. Logston looking to make this a 13-point lead. Smithy, he has it over to Shepard. And the Smith. Smith, he has lost in the beat. Back over to Evans. Thought about it. Shepard going to let one fly from deep. Not able to get it. Evans, I mean, Dost is going to smash that out of Loft's hand. And able to finish the possession. A little second chance opportunity right there given up by the Red Devils. That turns into points for MUW. You need to clean that up. Get after the defensive glass. Be aggressive. And I think Dost is just too athletic for Loft on that play. He just jumped up and took the ball out of his hand. Locked and worked in Shepard. He's going to stop. Over to Loft. Loft from deep. Not able to find it. DeJesus with the offensive rebound. Ball going to end up in Blake Locks in hand. He's going to let one ride. No good. It's going to be Smithy coming down with the rebound. Securing it. Evans with the head fake. Over to Smithy. Inside to Doss. Smith, Logsdon on him. He's going to spin. He's going to drive him. Logsdon just too little for, for Smith on that possession. Yeah, I got the mismatch that they wanted. Able to go to work on the smaller defender. Yeah, that's just Smith too big for him on that play. Logsdon, Evans the beat. He's going to get hit with a foul. Almost a travel call. A little under three and a half remaining in this first half. Red Devils lead by nine. Levi, what have you liked so far from the Red Devils in this first half of play? Uh, really good ball movement to start and uh, really aggressive, scrappy defense. I mean, active hands, good job using your feet and not just playing defense with your hands. And a great job from that lineup to give the starters a rest. Just a really, really good job. Not hurting the team, not causing too many turnovers. 
This is a good good start for the Red Devils here in this first half. Now if you can get your starters rest without having to worry about maintaining the lead, it's going to be good as Cody Bear missing a fadeaway on, attempt on that one. Slamovich, he's going to bring it up. He's working Noah Purchase. He's going to get the switch on Cody Bear. He's going to find Smith. Smith going to post up Bear. Hasn't had much success on Bear tonight, but he's going to go in with the hook shot, and he's going to score over Bear on that one. Right as I said, say he doesn't have success on Bear tonight. Kind of a wild shot. I'm not really sure how he got that one to fall. And Bear kind of pulled the chair on, on, on that one, but Smith still able to hold his center of gravity and get a running hook to go. Bear thought about a three. Going to take a mid-range instead. Not able to get it. He's going to get a foul call. Smith and visibly upset going over to talk to Coach Burroughs about that one. Yeah, it must have been after the shot. I didn't see any contact on the shot. It must have been something after the shot that got him with the body or something. And maybe they saying like when he landed, I know that's a, a, a thing, giving a defender space to land on his jump shot. I don't really know if that's emphasized at the collegiate level, more so at the NBA level. Yeah, Smith kind of saying ball don't lie on that possession is Cody Bear. This is the first free throw attempt. Cody Bear, a relatively good free throw shooter, especially for a guy his size. Bear able to knock down the second one, give the Red Devils an eight-point lead. You know, MUW has done a good job, a, 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 serviceable, a serviceable job getting back in this game, cutting the lead down to half. As they were trailing by 16 at one point. Smithy, he's going to try to go in on Ben Carter. Going to go up, no good. Brown going to come down with the defensive rebound. Brown has been a bit quiet in this game, but the Red Devils haven't really needed him. And he's going to go in on an attack. And he's going to get an and one. Pee Wee Brown with the crossover move to get his defender off balance and fin finish over the contact. Just unbelievable. Pee Wee Brown is just unbelievable when he, when he gets around the basket. He's so athletic. He's so nimble. we got a replay right here of that. Head fake, crossover. That's a tough, tough move. And Pee Wee Brown talking to the crowd. I'm not sure if anyone was over there. No, I think there might be one person over there. Letting that one person know he's him. Chris Evans with the ball. Pee Wee Brown, the defender. Going to get the screen from Doss. Switch off Noah Percy. Smithy going right to the post up on Ben Carter. Out to Islamovich. Back to Smithy. He's going to try a, a look from deep. And Smithy, his first three-pointer, going to fall. Red Devils lead this game now by 7, 39 to 32. And he, MUW has slowly gotten back into this game, slowly but surely. Brown, toss on him. He's going to fire up from deep. Going to get side of the rim on that one. We'd like to see the Red Devils put together a couple defensive stops and get some points and go into halftime with a double-digit lead. I would agree on that. A double-digit lead in halftime would be good for confidence and a, a lot, a, a decent amount of fluff just in case MUW decides to go on a run of their own, which they kind of have done in the second half of this first half. Over to Doss in the corner. He instantly dips it down to Smithy. Smithy goes up. He's able to get the two running to fall over Carter. Red Devils now lead this game by five. About 60 seconds remaining. Ben Carter going to slow it down a bit here. Cody Bear finding Pee Wee Brown back door, and he steps out of bounds. And Cole Burrow, he was right there. To, yeah, he was helping him out a little yeah. bit, letting him know. You know, we kind of talked about that pregame and during the Red Devils run. The Red Devils start a lot of games in these past few weeks hot from deep but kind of cool off and let other teams get back in it and we're kind of seeing that here Josh pulls up from two he doesn't really find anything on that one Locks him over the Bear Bear gonna go in Josh the man to beat Cody Bear with a smooth and one and he's gonna show some emotion on that one I think Noah Purse is trying to cool him off tapping him on the back Man, just a just a tough, tough take. I mean, we have talked about that 
Cody Bear is more of a finesse big. He's not really a power big. He's not gonna he's not gonna beat you with his his strength, but he's gonna move around you and, and use finesse. But right there, I mean, using his strength to go through that contact and still able to finish the bucket. And just because he's not seen as a, a pure post of strength big doesn't let that fool you. Still a pretty strong guy. Chris Evans. Gonna get the screen from Smith, the double screen from Smith and Smithy. Gonna go to that post on Dylan Logsdon, trying to go up. Bit of a wild shot. Johnson gonna come down with the defensive rebound. What should be the last possession of this half. Noah Percy, throwing it down. He's gonna get into that pattern to pull up mid-range. Not able to get it, but Dylan Logsdon almost coming down with the offensive rebound. Evans, Islamovic for the last shot at the buzzer, not able to get it. Red Devils with an eight-point lead to end this first half. Levi, what have you seen so far from the Red Devils? Well, obviously they got out to that hot start thanks to Ben Carter's shooting and, and his performance, and it really hasn't just been shooting. It's been on the glass and all around the court. He's been great. Defensively, not bad. Could do better cleaning up the offensive, uh, uh, the, the offensive rebounds, excuse me. And um, not a bad start for him. Offensively, obviously cooled down, but they're still resilient and still have an eight-point lead going into the second half. Going to have to be a tough, tough defensive second half for the Red Devils to keep the lead in this one. And that's all we have for you here at this first half on ECTV. We'll be right back for the second half. Yo, camping buddy. Okay, you guys ready? Dude, I thought you were driving. I thought you were driving. Oh, I never said I was driving. Well, I definitely can't drive. <laughs> if you're high, just don't drive. It's illegal everywhere. If you feel different, you drive different. Calvin got diagnosed June 10th of 2018. He has rhabdomyosarcoma, sarcoma, a soft tissue cancer. But St. Jude has covered everything. And coming here, they're like, we are going to do everything we can. And when they say everything, they mean everything. St. Jude is like the gold at the end of a rainbow for a family like ours. They've really given our family hope. And we are so grateful and thankful for everything. Proportion to me is the lived experience of our Division III student athletes. They balance life from an academic perspective and the rigors of competing at a high level, bonding with teammates and building lifelong friendships. But they also are involved in their communities. They work jobs and internships and volunteer. They've learned to be resilient. Diverse experiences are setting them up for the future. Passion is love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. You can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. A good citizen is someone who wants to make a positive impact both in their communities and in the world around them. The Division III approach is absolutely the best approach out there for amateur sport because it wants student athletes to explore all parts of who they are. Be successful in the classroom, be successful in competition, be successful in the community. So our student athletes learn what it means to strive for and attain success, but doing it the right way and being good citizens. Comprehensive learning is being able to adapt to experiences and apply the things that I learned. Being an athlete and juggling academics helped me grow as a person and things that I've learned, I was able to apply it in another field, putting them into everyday life. Developing comprehensive learning helped me prioritize certain things to make sure I get to where I want to be. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, being a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. I believe sportsmanship is a it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. 
we all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. Women are bad with money. That's what the world's been saying for centuries. But now we've got something to say. Save it. It's time to save ourselves by saving our money. Until we're no longer 80% more likely than men to live in poverty in retirement. Save it. The falsehoods, the feelings of fault. Then the funds. Learn how to save for your retirement at wesaysaveit.org. Hi there, I'm Sean Sandrock and I'm a sophomore here at Eureka College studying political science and history with a pre-law emphasis and music vocal performance and I'm going to be showing you around campus today. This is Burgess Street which separates the academic and residential sides of campus. Let's begin our tour here at Dickinson Commons which is one of our two eating establishments here on campus. It's set up like a food court style which offers substations, a grill station, pizza and even a home cooked meal. We also offer lots of vegan and vegetarian options here on campus. This is Burgess Hall, which houses our social science and business classes. It also contains our professor's offices and student classrooms. Built in 1891, Burgess was originally our library, which since has moved across the street in 1967 to our new library. Did you know, on the third floor of Burgess, we have a new creative design lab, which is designated to all of our art students. This is Malik Library, which has many resources here on Eureka College's campus, including upstairs cubicles, the gaming room, which is a lounge area, downstairs classrooms, and the Ronald Reagan archives. Did you know that President Reagan is a Eureka College alum? If you can't find your book here in the library, we're fortunate enough to be part of the iShare database, which consists of 90 libraries that will find your book and send it here. You may be wondering what classes are like here at Eureka. We usually have a student population of about 500 students, which allows for a lot of individualized attention in the classrooms. Our student to professor ratio is about 13 to 1, which allows students and professors to really get to know each other. We are now coming up on Benham Binkley on my left and Sanders on my right. Benham Binkley was built in 1917, right at the peak of World War I, and Sanders was added on in 2014, with the use of 100% donations given to the institution. This building was awarded Leadership and Energy Environmental Design, which focuses on Sanders being an eco-friendly structure. These buildings are classified as our math and science halls, which house classrooms, professors' offices, and a few science labs. This is Pritchard Theater, which was built right around the same time as Venom Binkley and was originally our sports complex here on campus. The main floor was the gym and the basement was our swimming pool, where President Ronald Reagan swam as a freshman here on campus. This building is now used for our fine arts classes. Eureka College also played a role in World War II. Enrollment was down due to war efforts and we were looking for a few new ways to bring in some cash. The college found a program where we could house Nazi German prisoners of war here in the United States. So Pritchard Theater became a holding place for prisoners of war where they would walk down the street during the day and work at the canning factory. The building behind me is the chapel which is a very historical building here on campus. It is home to our music department. Downstairs includes classrooms, professors' offices, and practice rooms. Upstairs, you will find McAllister Hall, which is where many students perform today. This is the stage where Ronald Reagan gave his first ever speech on behalf of Eureka College's student body. This is the hall where President Reagan discovered his speaking ability. In his 1982 commencement address, he stated, Everything that's been good in my life began here. Our oldest building behind me was built in 1858. Our administration building, Burris Dickinson, includes the President's Office, the Provost's Office, the Business Office, Alumni and Development Office, and some staff and professor's offices. If you look at this side of the building, you may notice some things when we reach the other side. Eureka College was founded in 1855 by a group of abolitionists that belonged to the Disciples of Christ Church. We are still associated with the Disciples of Christ Church, but we are now a multi-faith campus and we welcome all here. Did you know that we were the first institution in Illinois and the third in the nation to admit men and women at an equal basis? Now if you look at the opposite side of the building, besides the fire escape, you will notice that both sides are exactly the same. 
This building was here before the town of Eureka had even been established, so they didn't know which way the town was going to expand. So they decided to create two front entrances. This is the Ronald Reagan Peace Garden, dedicated to the life and legacy of President Ronald Wilson Reagan. You will see here a bust of President Reagan, as well as a significantly large piece of the Berlin Wall, which commemorates President Reagan challenging Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down this wall. The garden is a great place to chill out and enjoy the outdoor environment here on campus. Eureka College is the smallest institution to graduate a United States president, which goes to show that all students at Eureka can dream big and fulfill them. We are now looking at the Surf Center, where there are many resources useful for everyone, especially incoming students. This is the Ronald Reagan Museum, which holds over 10,000 artifacts of President Reagan's life here at Eureka. Some were even hand-selected by Reagan himself. The Surf Center also includes the Career Service Center, Becker Auditorium, the Office of Student Life, and our College Bookstore. Our final stop in the Surf Center is our second eating establishment here on campus called the Burgoo, named after a stew. The Burgoo is set up more like a store or a restaurant, unlike Dickinson Commons. Some of the students' favorite meals here are cheese sticks, chicken wraps, and Starbucks coffee drinks. While we walk over to the residential side, some students who live close may be wondering, commute or not? About 40% of our students here at Eureka are commuters, which means that all parking on campus is free for all students. Built in 2012, Arnold Hall is our newest residence facility here on Eureka College's campus. These are our most spacious rooms on campus, which is nice when sharing it with a roommate. Arnold Hall consists of five wings that each house upper class residents. Each wing has its own study lounge and larger social lounge with a TV. Every room on campus comes with a bed, chest, desk, bookcase, chair, and closet for each resident. Arnold houses two of the three sororities on campus. The rooms also include great ethernet access and high-speed Wi-Fi as well as geothermal heating and cooling. Arnold also includes a full kitchen and lots of additional lounge and study space, including a media room on the upper level that is perfect for group project work and has a printer free for student use. Behind me is Langston Hall, which is an upperclassman residence facility that offers suite style living. Langston is co-ed by suite and is set up with two single person rooms that share a toilet and shower in the middle but have their own sinks in their rooms. It is convenient for upper class students who would like to live in a quieter environment. Each floor in Langston has a large lounge area with a TV, study, and social space. The lobby area has a couple computers and a printer for student use. This is the Reagan Athletic Complex, dedicated to President Ronald Reagan and his older brother Neil, who also attended the college. Our gym is completely equipped with stadium chairs, which means every chair has a back. We are the only NCAA Division III school to have this luxury. Upstairs, a classroom, some event rooms, and many coaches' offices. The Bonatti Fitness Center is offered free to all students who would like to exercise using machines. Even commuter students have the access to this facility free of charge. Last in this building, our weight room, which is full of new equipment as of fall of 2019. Just outside the Reagan Athletic Complex, we have our football and soccer field, as well as our baseball and softball diamonds. The football and soccer field was converted into AstroTurf, and it also includes a Megatron. Here at Eureka College, we have many different athletic teams that compete throughout various times of the year. To my right is Founders Court, which is predominantly a freshman residence hall. Both of our freshman residence halls are set up to be limited occupancy so students can get to know each other and create a community value. Founders consists of four separate buildings that are all connected by stairwells. Darst, Deweese, Ford, and Myers. All of our residence halls have access to laundry areas that are free of charge for all students. Founders Court residents use Ben Major just next door for additional lounge space and a large laundry facility. We are now at Alumni Court, which also houses all incoming freshmen. These rooms are comfortably sized for two roommates. Be sure to check your packing list before you come to campus to see what items it is suggested that you bring and what items are not allowed on campus. Connecting both alumni residential buildings is our learning center, a great resource to use if you want help with writing or any course, or you could help here by becoming a tutor. The learning center is also a great place to study and is open 24 seven for student use. This is Ben Major, named after the man who owned all of the land that Eureka College now sits upon. This is a recreational building here on campus, which gives the students opportunities to chill out, play games, or even watch TV. To finalize our tour, behind me is Guns and Hauser Hall. 
It was built in 1929. It was extensively remodeled, but we strive to keep the 1920s look with the original wood floors, doors, and pedestal sinks. This concludes our tour here at Eureka College. For more information or to schedule a tour, please visit us online. We hope to see you soon. When I never graduated from high school, I realized I wanted to go back to school because I didn't want to work these back-breaking jobs the rest of my life. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed to come back to school. I felt accomplished. It made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Today here at the Reagan Center, right here on ECTV, I'm Kareem Burnett with my broadcast partner, Levi Taylor. The Red Devils are leading 42 to 34, and we have our first half stats right in front of us. Levi, what, what stands out to you the most out of that first half performance? Well, I mean, obviously, Ben Carter having 21 points in that first half, putting, which is really we can thank our lead to him. Having a great first half. We had a really good defensive first half. Would like to see us force a few more turnovers. MUW did a really good job taking care of the ball in that first half. But a great half for the Red Devils. Going to need to be a, another tough defensive performance in the second half. We're going to win this one. Pee Wee Brown draws a foul on Doc, on Dukes, I'm sorry. He gets himself his first looks at the free throw line in this second half. Ben Carter was exceptional in that first half. Five first half threes for 21 points in total. He had a great backdoor cut slam as well. All highlight plays in that first half. And like you said, he really, he really, you know, we got on his back and he rode us all the way home in that first half. It's going to be Chris Evans bringing the ball up. Unless you heard me right, folks, Chris Evans, not Captain America, but doing his best Captain America performance, bringing two big threes in that first half. Smith, Smithy, I'm sorry, it's his two points. In the bear, yeah, Smith on him. Put a Brown, Carter, he has Smith in the bear. He's gonna work Smithy. Go up with that jump hook that he's like. Not able to find that one. Evans gonna slow it down here. Coach Wilde was barking at the rest trying to get a foul call on that one. <laughs> I mean, that's every coach ever. Smith from deep. Bear with a great contest. Gonna end. Paul gonna end up back in the hands of Evans. Dukes looking to feed Smith. Finally able to get it into him. Smith trying to work Bear. Going right, spinning left, jump hook left. Not able to get it. Bear coming down with the rebound. Really good job to still play defense even after giving up the offensive rebound. And Cody Bear did a great job of guarding Smith in that first half. We're going to get a jump ball here, and it's going to be MUW's ball. I mean, there was a lot of contact on that, but I still think that was the correct call. He got all ball on that. And I think Kiwi Brown disagrees. Do whatever the ref call. Evans working that dribble move. Out to Smith, his first three-pointer of the night. Not able to fall. Johnson gonna come up with the rebound. Johnson slowing it down. Brown into Bear. Bear working Smith, fadeaway hook. Not able to get it. Johnson, offensive rebound. Brown. Thought about it. He has Shepard on him. He's going to attack. Downhill. Fader. Not able to get it. Shepard in the Smithy. Smithy spin move. Doss. I mean Dukes. Dukes able to knock it down from deep. Red Devils now only up five points. Red Devils a bit lackluster offensively. And those struggles on offense are translating to the defensive side. Having a hard time getting going here in the second half. And that's one thing we, we've talked about multiple times in this game. The Red Devils having that same consistency and same energy level in the second half as they did coming out in the first half. 
Something that they definitely struggle with all season. Cody Bear misses his two-point attempt. Evans going to walk it up. Gonna get the screen from Smith. Brown pokes it away. Still ends up in Smith's hand. Smithy. Carter on him. Going left. Brown's denying Evans. Denies Evans. And Evans going to get caught with a travel. Wonder how long it was going to take the rest to call it. I'd like to see the, the Red Devils have a good offensive possession here. Move the ball around. Get an open shot. Yeah, definitely want to look for a smarter look. Offense is kind of going to stale a little bit in this second half. Bear over the inside the Brown. Brown, he's working Doss. He's going to go up. He's going to get the left hand to fall. Pee Brown over Darius Doss. Red Devils now up seven in this game. Evans to Smith. Brown taking the Smith assignment. Running floater. No good. Bear coming down with the rebound. Johnson going to push the pace. Persis thought about it. Side. Bear, long range triple. Not able to get it. Doss, long rebound. Red Devils slow to get back. Smith handoff to Shepard. Evans. Smithy in the corner. Inside to Smith. Bear tried to deny Smith a few pump fakes. He's blocked by Bear. Brown going to end up with it. It's a one-on-two fast break. Bear get back. Bear going to get there. And Smithy no choice but to foul. A hard foul there. And that got the bench going. As Bear is going to get himself a look at the line. And it's going to be a, an intentional foul on MUW. So Bear going to get it, looks at the line and the ball back. Not really a smart play there by Smithy. Should have just played hands up defense. Bear able to convert that one. Red Devils now lead this game by eight. 15 and a half remaining in the second quarter. Second half, excuse me. And I believe that the intentional foul was the correct call. I mean, there was no effort to go after the basketball. They just kind of wrapped Cody up. Absolutely an intentional foul. I mean, anytime anybody just wraps a player up, what else is he looking to do but foul him? Maybe give him a hug. Then that would also be a foul. Johnson, the inbound man on this play. Over to Carter. Carter fade away from mid-range. And he's going to get the lucky bounce. And that's been his story all night as he's up to 23 points. Red Devils down, lead this game again by double digits. Smithy working on Carter. Hasn't had any success really. Trying to bully Carter on that post. Trying to try his success from deep. Not able to get it. Johnson with a defensive rebound. He's going to push it up the side. In and out crossover, getting to that lane. And Jalen Johnson with the right hand scoop layup on the left hand side. Red Devils up by 12. And we're going to take a break right here on ECTV. Si necesitas hacer algo para sentirte bien para manejar, mejor no manejes. Welcome back to another broadcast right here on ECTV at the Reagan Center. Red Devils up 12 in a very important game as we get closer and closer to that playoff time. The Red Devils seventh in the Sly Act, two games behind Blackburn, looking to keep their hopes alive. Levi, what have the Red Devils done coming out of this second half? to increase their lead. Well, they started a little bit slow, as I mentioned, but really picked up the intensity on the defensive side. Had a few big momentum plays. And uh, 
when you when you pick up the intense intensity on defense and you're able to get stops that translates over to the offense and you feel like you get more momentum and that's why we see the 13 point lead from them right now is because they've done a better job on on the defensive side red devils have done a fantastic job in this game on both sides smithy with the look it's gonna go off smith's leg and be red devil's ball Cody Bear never won the stride away from sportsmanship. Going to help Smith up. Jalen Johnson going to bring it up here. Hand it off to Persich. Over to Carter. Brown in the corner. Persich. Head fake. Pass fake. Pull up. No good. Doss with the defensive rebound. Evans. Evans back to Doss. Back to Evans. Evans pull up three. Just barely rattles out. Smith with the offensive rebound. Doss, Smithy, driving on Johnson. Spin move. Not able to finish the end one. They get a little practice layup afterwards. You know, we've seen a lot in this game. MUW has kind of tried to use that size advantage, not necessarily in the height department, but maybe in the strength department, to kind of bully the Red Devil defenders. But haven't had a incredible amount of success doing that yeah there, there have been a few instances where they've gotten the mismatch that they've wanted and they they're able to use their size but like you said red devils have been really playing stout defense in this game doing a good job and once again right there they did they were able to use the strength to to get to the basket but there haven't been too many times that that's worked for them and our guys aren't just no aren't just pushovers they're not just gonna body your way to the basket we have some physical guys as well as ben carter Test his luck from deep, not, not able to get it. Evans on the attack, out to Smithy. Smithy over to Shepard. Shepard inside the dot. He has Johnson. He's working Johnson. He's going to go up, left hand. Johnson looking for the charge. No call. Purchase with the rebound. Brown on the attack over Smithy. And he's going to get a layup to fall. Red Devils up 13. Pee Wee Brown in transition is just almost impossible to stop. Smithy on the attack. Jalen Johnson with a block on that play. Excuse me, Ben Carter with the block. Johnson over to Purchase. He's going to test his luck. Not able to get it. Doss down with the rebound. Doss with the spin move. Purchase recovers. Doss the fake pass. Not able to find it. Johnson up ahead to Carter. Carter for three. No good. And he's kind of cooled down from that inferno start he had in the first half. Smithy unable to find a contested two-pointer. We'd love to see the Red Devils to slow down and get in their offensive set, move the ball around. They've kind of fallen in love with the three-point shot the last few possessions. Get something where it can attack the basket. Yeah, no need to fall in love with the deep ball when you're up double digits like this. You can afford to slow it down. Not necessarily burn a little bit of clock, but take your time. Be patient. Cody Bear missed his two-point attempt. Smithy, player, bit of a point forward roll on this play. Into Smith. Smith working Bear. Bear has done a great job all night guarding Smith. And Smithy, he's able to knock his second triple down from deep to cut it down to a 10-point deficit. Red Devils doing just that, slowing the ball down, letting the game come to them. Over to Persich, to Carter, jab, he's working Smithy, he's going to drive, and he's going to slam it home. Ben Carter with his second dunk of the night. Really good take to the basket, I mean, he was one-on-one -on -one with his man, there was nobody down there. And they're getting a foul on Pee Wee Brown. But was one-on-one -on -one with his man, had him in isolation, and just took him straight to the, to the rack, and... He wasn't going to be jumping with Ben Carter. I definitely wouldn't jump with Ben Carter. Gets off the ground so easy. Islamovic checking into this game, and we're going to get a replay. Jab step. Mm, punched it home. Such an athletic player. Carter, 
Trying to feed Mayer, not able to get it. Smith Jr. able to poke that away. Evans gonna test his luck from deep, not able to get it. Duke's gonna come up with the rebound. No good, Bear down with the defensive rebound. Out to Brown, Brown, pull up three, no. He's gonna draw the foul. Brown kinda faked me out for a minute. I thought he was pulling up. I, I did too, I thought he was pulling up for three there. But I think it was a better decision to take it in, take it into the contact. Attack the basket. I mean, that's that's kind of what the Red Devils need to do right now is just attack the basket. Attack, attack, attack. He's going to get himself a trip to the line. A point to know here, Bree Hopkins, MUW leading scorer, hasn't played a single minute in this game. I'm not even sure if he's on the bench, if he's dealing with some type of injury or something, but senior forward, forward hasn't seen any minutes in this game at all. Evans walking it up, trying to get his team going. They trail double digits. He's going to pull up mid-range. Tied able to get it over Ben Carter. Smith Jr. coming down with the offensive class. Evans going to go in again, and it's poked away by Bear. He's going to hit it off of, Smith, off of Evans' knee. Great, great defensive stop there by Brown. Yeah, very good defensive stop. One thing about the Red Devils' defense, they're starting to give up a few offensive rebounds the last few possessions. Need to see them clean that up because MUW is going to start capitalizing on those. Yeah. We're going to take a timeout here. We'll be right back at it with basketball play. I'm Kareem Burnett, Levi Taylor, right here on ECTV. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit. And now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking. Now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. Welcome back to second half play here at the Reagan Center on ECTV. I'm Kareem Burnett with my partner, Levi Taylor. The Red Devils currently leading this game. 56 to 46. And it's been a game for Ben Carter. He's up to 23 points in total. 21 first half points, but it's been a well-rounded play as a whole from the Red Devils. Brown is working that post on Dukes, and he's able to draw the foul. I mean, for a guard, Pee Wee Brown does a very good job in the post. He, he actually likes being there, and uh, you don't really see that too much from guards, but he's a very physical player. He fights through the contact a lot, and just for a guard, he's very good from the post. Yeah, Pee Wee Brown, I've known him since he was a freshman at Lincoln, also my freshman year. And he's, like you said, a very physical bas basketball player, very aggressive on both sides of the floor. And he does love that, love that post up, that mid range game. A slasher, if I would say so. Brown, two for two this trip. Giving the Red Devils a 12-point lead with around 10 minutes remaining in this second half. Red Devils up 12. Now, we did see last game out against Lyon. Around this same minute mark, the Red Devils were up 16, but only end up winning that game by two points. What are some things they could do to kind of avoid those same mistakes in this game? I think it starts with keeping the de defensive intensity up, staying active, keeping, staying energetic. And not making mistakes. You gotta keep gotta take care of the ball. Capitalize on the second chance opportunities that you have. And the Red Devils in that Lion game went one for six in the last three minutes, only scoring two points off of a putback miss from Cody Bear. So the well did run dry. We're gonna get a, a foul on Doss, I believe. On the ground foul. Doss gonna pick up a ticky tack foul. Sure as coaches. Not too happy with that play. About 9.37 remaining in this ball game. Blake Lawson has checked in. And we're going to get a timeout from Coach Wildy. Not liking what he sees so far. We're going to stay here on this one. Red Devils up 10 so far. They've come out good in this second half. It looked like they were going to let 
and UW kind of get back into it, but they were able to rein, reel it back in and keep that lead at about double digits. Yeah, as you mentioned earlier, basketball is a game of runs, and, and if you can withstand a run and come back with a run of your own, then, then you're going to be in good shape, and I feel like that's what the Red Devils have done in this game. They started off the game hot. MUW came back with a little run of their own, and, and the Red Devils have done a good job sustaining that here in the second half and still with a double-digit lead. Interesting to see how the Red Devils will maintain this lead going forward. It's going to be Blake Logs in the inbounded. This play, he's going to inbound it to Brown. Michael Brewer, the freshman, checking back into this game. He's going to find Pee Wee Brown cutting. And Pee Wee Brown is going to get totally clobbered and get himself another trip to the line. His third trip to the line in about these last four or five minutes. Really good find from the freshman Brewer to find the cutting Brown. It's a very good backdoor cut, very good pass. Crowd getting into it now. Moving someone. Gotta love that Eureka crowd. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that might have been Doss's fifth foul. I could be wrong, but I think it might have been. You might be right on that play. We'll be able to tell you later on in this game, but. Kiwi Brown not able to convert both of them. The Red Devils maintain an 11-point lead. It's over to Smithy and the Dukes and the Smith Jr. Islamovic pull up mid-range. No good. Brown comes down with the rebound. Bear running the floor. Gonna get it back to Brown. Slow it down. MUW running a 2-3, I believe. Inside the Bear. Bear pull up mid-range over Smith. Smith is just way too small to contest that pull-up jumper. Yeah, Bear right there just using his size, using his, his long arms to get up there and, and uh, convert that mid-range jumper. Want to get an on-the-ground foul, foul on Logston. He's going to foul, foul Dukes. Josh Dukes, the sophomore guard. Cam Smith going to check back into this game. Going to be Evans inbounding it. Out to Smithy. Smithy, jab step, crossover. Pull it back out. Evans fires up the triple. No good. Bear comes down with the rebound. Bear going to push it up the floor. Find Logsdon. Logsdon up the Bear. Bear going to slam it home and pull up on the rim some and let the crowd hear it. Really good fast break from the Red Devils. Really good pass from Blake Logsdon to find Cody Bear with the lob. Smithy, no good from three. Bear comes down with the rebound. Gonna get a replay here. That was a great way they ran the floor. Bear found his guard so his guard can then find him for the easy lob. And an easy two points as Bear slammed it home. He got a couple highlight plays in this game. Cody Bear getting the trip to the line. I believe they called a foul call on Cam Smith on the other end. I was too busy celebrating the lob to kind of see what happened myself. There was a foul on the... Cody Bear got a, a rebound and there was a foul on a reach in. Cody, he's going to go lock down that free throw. Give him another look at the line. Here's a one and one. Red Devils now up to a 16-point lead with a chance to make it 17 here. That would be the biggest lead of the night. About 8-17 remaining in this ball game. Bear not able to convert the second one. The lead stays at 16. Ball with the ball, his first minutes in, in a while, his first time checking into this game in the second half. He's going to get the screen from Smith. 
He's going to rise up. Floater, no good. Bear going to come down with it. Bear over the logs. Carson looking to set him up. Over to Brewer. Brewer inside the Bear. Bear going to lay it in for probably his easiest two points of the night. And the Red Devils now with an 18-point lead. Seven and a half remaining. A really good pass from Brewer. I'm really not sure how he fit that one in there. Yeah, he just kind of whipped it right through the defense. And Cody was wide open for it. That was a layup line type layup. I could have made that. Isaiah Ball going to inbound it. Smithy the man to inbound it. Over the ball. To Shepard. Inside to Smith. Smith going to face up. To Hazel's going to be the help. Over to Smithy. Smithy going to fake it. Shepard. Ball from deep. No good. Bear down with the rebound. Cody Bear has been a monster on the glass all night. He has seven first half rebounds. He's cracked a double-double already. Logs and pull up mid-range. No good. Ball with the defensive rebound. Serve in the court. Over to Duke. To Shepard. Smithy. He's working on the Hazels. And Blake Logsdon comes out of nowhere, steals it. He's going to push it up. He's going to scoop it and going to get the foul. He's going to be helped up. Foul's going to be on ball. And Blake Logsdon, he'll get another look at the line. Excuse me, Shepard is going to get hit with the foul call. And that was an, that was an M1, Kareem, because they called a they called a goaltending. Oh, I didn't even know they called a goaltend. Going to possibly get another look at that play. Lost and not able to convert the three-point play. Red Devils now up to 20. The lead is... Ball going to fake. And one opportunity here. Lead is back, back down to 18. You know, it feels like MUW's energy has kind of dwindled. They had that, you know, they were able to cut this lead down to five at one point. Went on a run of their own. But since then, the Red Devils pushed it up to 20 at one point. And Jonah Loft is going to pick up the foul. He's going to have to be careful. Smithy, I believe his first attempt at the line. And he's able to knock it down. He's cut the lead down to 17 with 6-19 remaining in this game. Smithy, he's two for two. And a knife on the line. 68 to 52 here on this broadcast on ECTV. The Red Devils look to get closer and closer to playoff contention. Law, Logsdon, the Hazels. Over to Brewer. Brewer crossover move, step back. Got the crowd going with that move. Logsdon with the screen from Law. I mean from, yeah, Law. And ball and Logsdon kind of got wrestled up in the ball on that play. I think it's going to be MUW's basketball. Red Devils up big with a little under six remaining in this half. You know if all things go accordingly, they should walk away with a win here. Duke from deep. Smithy, offensive rebound, overloft, hook shot, good. Lead is down to 14. Well, the Red Devils need to not get comfortable. There's still a lot of time left in this ball game. MUW still has a chance to kind of claw their way back into this one. Yeah, a lot of time left, only down 14. Jonah Loft fires up from deep, and he's able to make it for his first points of the night. And the league is right back up to 17. 
And like you said, Levi, this is, you know, a lineup we've seen earlier. They were able to maintain the lead. It did get cut down some, but they were able to keep the lead. And hoping for the same results in this half. And Smithy is fouled. I believe it was Dylan Logsdon picked up that foul on that play, his second foul. He's conversating with the ref to kind of get an explanation. Duke able to convert. Lead back down to 16. A little under five minutes remaining. You know, you got to wonder, leave out. Levi, how long is Coach Wildy going to rest the starters with the lead what it is? Yeah, I mean, you, you definitely don't want to put him back into the game cold. You don't want to sit him for too long. You might start to sub him in one back one as one by one as Noah Persis goes to the table to check in. But yeah, you don't want to leave him out too long and have him get cold. point game here. Isaiah Ball working that baseline. He's going to rise up over Noah Persis. Not able to get it. Duke's going to pick up the foul here, I believe, against Dylan Logsdon. Well, Logsdon going to pick up the foul. Excuse me. Got a, a update here for the standings. Lion currently up one against Blackburn, and that will work in the Red Devils' favor as they're two games behind Blackburn for that six seed, which would get them into playoff contention. So a win here and a loss for Blackburn would be very well favored for Red Devils. It's gonna be Micah Brewer, the freshman, over to Brown. Ball finds his way back to Brewer. There, Lawson thought about it. Gonna find Brown. Brown gonna get the screen, reject the screen. Gonna go into attack. Lawson, jab step, gonna drive, get himself to the lane. And one opportunity, not able to convert it. Really good job by the Red Devils here offensively. I think the smartest thing for them right now is to dwindle that shot clock down as much as you can, burn as much time as possible. Because right now that's the only thing stopping you from, from a win. You're, the clock is your opponent now. So dwindle that shot clock down, take a long time on your possessions, and then attack, attack the basket. I couldn't have said it no, no better myself, Levi. Definitely no need to rush it at this point. You're up double digits on your home court. Just burn some shot clock. Give MUW as least amount of looks as possible and walk away with a win here. And as I just mentioned, Blackburn currently down in their matchup versus Lion. And if they lose and... Red Devils win that will put them one game behind Blackburn with five games remaining in the division, in the Slyak division. Isaiah Ball goes up over Cody Bear to finish. Cut this down to a 14-point lead. Pee-wee Brown going to pick up the foul there. A little under three and a half remaining in this game. As Levi mentioned a few minutes ago, 
The Red Devils really just have to look to burn clock in these possessions. Excuse me, Isaiah Ball fouled Pee Wee Brown on that possession. As I was just saying, going to look to burn some clock here and walk away with a very important win. Pee Wee Brown not able to convert that free throw attempt. And with that foul, the Red Devils are now in double bonus, so any foul will give them, send them to the line for two shots. Yeah, the Red Devils looking for a desperate win here to keep their playoff hopes alive. Four remaining matchups, five including this one. The next matchup will be Wednesday at Fontbonne. A double header. The women's will also be taking off Fontbonne. Nice, nifty move there. I think he might have gotten away with a, a little bit of a walk there, but. I believe that was Jackson Corey with that move. His first minutes tonight. Oh, excuse me, that was Nathan Reed. Ooh. Bit of a scary play right there. Pee Wee Brown was tripped up after the play, but he's all right. Zell Ball picking up his second foul and Pee Wee Brown back to the line. About 2.43 remaining in this game. You know, all things going in favor. Red Devils should walk away with this win. Pee Wee Brown and Isaiah Ball chatting it up. Nothing mischievous though is Pee Wee Brown did seem to be laughing. Brown not able to convert his first look at the line. It's going to be important for the Red Devils to finish out this game strong because it can do a lot for your team morale. Having a big win like this, finishing out a game strong, putting together a complete basketball game. As you mentioned, a lot of times they'll get up to a big lead and start to see that lead dwindle. So it'll do a lot for this team's confidence to put together a complete game. As we know, confidence is probably the main factor in terms of sports. You can have all the skill in the world, but if you have no confidence to use it, it's kind of worthless. As Jackson Corey is able to cut the lead down to 10, we're going to take a break here. You're watching Eureka College Basketball on ECTV. That's what the world's been saying for centuries. But now we've got something to say. Save it. It's time to save ourselves by saving our money. Until we're no longer 80% more likely than men to live in poverty in retirement. Save it. The falsehoods, the feelings of fault. Then, the funds. Learn how to save for your retirement at wesaysaveit.org. Here on ECTV, Kareem Burnett, Levi Taylor, Red Devils currently lead 73 to 63, two and a half remaining in this quarter. Levi, you mentioned before you went on break how important of a win this is for the Red Devils' morale and confidence. Yeah, I mean, this could do big things for this team, especially getting down to crunch time in this season where they need to win it. pretty much every game that they play for the rest of the season. Yeah, you know, right. Probably got a little bit comfortable in this game now. We've got four of the five starters back on the floor because now this is only a 10 point ball game with two and a half minutes left. This is still a game. This is definitely still a game and a uh, great substitution decision by Coach Wildy to get those starters back into the game. At least four out of five of them. Going to be Noah Persis. Corey Jackson might have got away with a bit of a foul. Carter, the hot hand, the hot hand man. Over to Logsdon. Logsdon to Persich. Persich inside the Bear. Bear working Smith. Got to find his position. Bump fade and it's good. With one second on the clock. Tough, tough basket from Cody Bear. Jackson going to test it from deep. No good. Bear coming up with the rebound. Brown going to walk it up. Definitely should be looking to burn some clock here, as you mentioned, Levi. 
Brown, Carter. Going to find Persis on the lob in the backdoor cut. A highlight move there. Persis didn't slam it home, but it was a pretty, pretty lob nonetheless. Ball going to test his luck with the Euro layup. Not able to get it with the left hand. I mean, an, an impressive lob from Cody Bear from that far away with the accuracy of that pass. Really good backdoor pass from Ben Carter, unable to get it to go. You know, with Persich, but just an incredible backdoor pass from Ben Carter. Two great backdoor passes, one from Carter and one from Bear. As you said, Bear way out past the three-point line and hit the running man, Persich, perfectly. Hurts is going to get a trip at the line to possibly make this a 15-point lead. And he does exactly that. The Red Devils lead 78-63 to with 61 seconds remaining in this game. You know, there was a point, there was two and a half minutes left in this game, and it was a 10-point ball game. And it looked like MUW was going to kind of try to work their way back into this one. But the Red Devils responded with strong resiliency, was able to extend their lead now with 61 seconds left, as you mentioned, and a 15-point lead. It's going to be hard for MUW to come back in this one. Yeah, only less than 60 seconds remaining in this game, and another update from the Blackburn Lion matchup. Lion currently lead by one point with 48 seconds remaining in the last half of the game. So two big games here today for the Red Devils. Ball goes in and he's barely not able to make it. Lockton going to come up with the rebound and that should do it, Levi. Red Devils up 16 in this game. Under 40 seconds remaining. We're going to get some substitutions here. Micah Brewer, Sam DeJesus. Checking in the game for Pee Wee Brown and Cody Bear. They're going to get a standing ovation. Going to get some subs on the other side as well. We have Sanford checking into the game. And Reed also coming into this game. Blackburn has just taken a one-point lead against Lyon with 35 seconds remaining. So the Red Devils going to secure a win here, but they're going to need a Blackburn loss as well. Red Devils just burning clock here at this point. The game is decided. Boston from deep. Going to be Ball coming down with the rebound. And this will do it. Put in the score books. A win here by the Red Devils, 79 to 65. Ben Carter, the lead man, 23 points. Cody Bear also leading with a double-double. Levi, what did the Red Devils do here to secure this win? Well, one of the main things that I that I think that they did well, which is something that we mentioned in the pregame, they got multiple scores, multiple guys in double digits today. Instead of just points coming from two guys, had multiple people in the scoring column, did a very good job offensively and even a better job defensively just responding with resiliency to any type of run that MUW put together. Just a great all-around performance for the Red Devils. Well, you heard it here from Levi. Our next broadcast will be on Wednesday, February 7th, when the Eureka women and men travel to Fontbonne. Tip-offs are set for 5.30 and 7.30, respectively. Broadcasts will air on our sister stations, WEUR. On behalf of our entire crew and my broadcast partner, Levi Taylor, this is Kareem Burnett. Thank you for joining us and have a great night.